Here we are at example two from our 3.3 set of notes. We're asked to find the derivative of the inverse of this function, f of x, which we know is the square root of negative two x minus three. Uh, what I'm actually gonna do is show you two different ways, kind of the textbook way and kind of the way that I learned it in college. Um, so whichever method you feel works for you, totally use, but I wanted to give you guys some options. Now, when we're looking at the function, uh, we first have to go ahead and identify what is in fact the inverse. Uh, both methods would actually require us to figure out what is that inverse. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we're just going to say that y is equal to, instead of f of x, the function, uh, the square root of negative 2x minus 3. Now anywhere that there is an x, we're going to go ahead and replace it with a y. Anywhere that there was a y, we're going to throw in that x, essentially just swapping out the variables. We end up then with x is equal to the square root of negative two y minus three. That right there is actually kind of your inverse happening when you guys swap out those variables. Uh, so graphically, if you were to you know do that, that's actually the inverse occurring. Let's go ahead and rewrite this piece now, just to kind of. Uh, actually, you don't even have to. We don't even have to. Um, just trying to solve now for y. You could square both sides. So it looks like we would end up then with x squared is equal to this square root. We cancel out with the squared, leaving us with the negative 2y minus 3. And again, trying to solve for y. So we could add this 3 over to both sides. So we would end up with x squared plus 3 is equal to negative 2y. And then lastly, just divide both sides by negative 2. So then y is equal to x squared plus 3 all over negative 2. So it looks like our inverse, f inverse of x, comes out to be x squared plus 3 all over negative 2. Now, again, there's two ways to really proceed with this one, but I kind of wanted to start off by showing you the, the textbook way that you know, you'll, you're definitely going to see in the textbooks, probably even college instructors would even show this. Um, but again, I think my college instructor showed me the other method too, so it's kind of up to you. So for the first one, we have to start out by taking the derivative. All right, so we have to take the derivative of the original function. So there is our original function. We want to take the derivative of f of x. So when we do that, we'll just go ahead and rewrite f of x, which we know that it's the square root of negative 2x minus 3. We're just going to go ahead and rewrite that as negative 2x minus 3 raised to the 1 half power instead. Uh, now if we want to go ahead and take the derivative of that, so f prime of x, well we see that we actually have a chain rule happening here. So we're going to go ahead and bring out this uh, using the power rule, bring that number in front. So we'll end up with 1 half. We rewrite this inside piece, so negative 2x minus 3. And then subtracting 1 from this exponent, we would get negative 1 half. But then we also have to take the derivative of our inside piece. So the derivative of negative 2x comes out to be negative 2. And this would just be 0. Now, when we're trying to just kind of simplify this up a little bit, we notice that our derivative f prime of x comes out to be, looks like this negative 2, we cancel out with the 1 half, leaving still just the negative. So we have negative um, 1 times negative 2x minus 3 raised to the negative 1 half power. And at this point, what we can do is go ahead and take this uh, this piece, this negative 2x minus 3 raised to the negative 1 half power. Because it's raised to a negative power, we can go ahead and throw it under in, and as our denominator. So we end up with negative 1 over negative 2x minus 3 raised now to the positive 1 half power. And then just rewriting that one last time, we see that our derivative f prime of x comes out to be negative 1 over the square root of negative 2x minus 3. So now that we have the derivative, we can go ahead and use the definition that they've given us. 
and to find the derivative with respect to x of our inverse function, we saw that from the definition it was 1 over f prime of x, I'm sorry, f prime of f inverse of x. So in other words, anywhere that there was an x in for our derivative function, we're going to go ahead and throw in that inverse. So that would be that location. In other words, anywhere that there is this x for our derivative, we're going to go ahead and throw in f inverse of x. Now, luckily, we already found out what f inverse was. There he is, x squared plus 3 minus 2. So just kind of showing that, we would have 1 divided by our f prime, so negative 1, divided by the square root of negative 2 times, instead of x, we're throwing in our inverse function. And again, that was our x squared plus 3 divided by negative 2. We'll show that in the green part. So x squared plus 3 divided by negative 2. And then after that, we still have our minus 3 at the end. So that's again from the derivative function. So again, what we've done is anywhere that there was an x inside of our derivative function, right there, we threw in our inverse function. Now there's really a couple ways that we can kind of continue on from here, um, but let's just go ahead and simplify this inside piece. So we have 1 divided by negative 1 divided by negative 2. We cancel out with this other negative 2. So then we have the square root of x squared. And then it looks like, oops, that should have been all the way through there. Uh, this 3, we cancel out with that 3, leaving us then with really just the square root of x squared. Now, ultimately, we do have a fraction. Uh, this is actually it right here, divided by this other fraction. In fact, we can even clean this up even further. Uh, really, we have 1 over negative 1 divided by square root of x squared. Those just cancel out, leaving you with just x. And then ultimately, because we have this fraction divided by this other fraction, essentially we're multiplying it by this reciprocal. So when we do that, I'll just show the long way. That way you guys can see everything. It looks like our final answer comes out to be negative x. So again, that is the formal definition way that textbooks will use. Now I kind of want to get into the, the other method that I think, I, personally I think is a little bit more efficient, just makes a little bit more sense. Uh, instead of necessarily memorizing a definition. So we've already found the inverse. Again, you'd have to do that using the second method as well. Uh, we've already found the inverse. And again, that was, so this is the second way. Uh, our, our inverse was x squared plus 3 divided by negative 2. That's what we said it was. Now, if we're trying to take the derivative of the inverse function, well, essentially what you're doing there is an implicit differentiation. So we haven't actually taken the derivative yet, we're just saying that we're about to take the derivative. And again, that's on both sides. That's implicit differentiation, something we studied last chapter. So this is again what we're hoping to get in the end anyway. Um, on the right side, this is where we're actually going to do all of our kind of math and calculations. We notice that we're trying to take the derivative of this function. Well, essentially, this is really just a quotient rule happening. So here's our f, here's our g. Let's go ahead and take the derivatives of each. So f is equal to x squared plus 3, and g is equal to negative 2. Taking the derivatives of each one, f prime comes out to be 2x g prime, oh well, that's just a constant, comes out to be zero. As always, we do our cross. 
So then it looks like our derivative uh, comes out to be 2x times negative 2 gives us negative 4x, big minus, 0 times x squared plus 3, that's just going to be 0, divided by our bottom squared, so negative 2 quantity squared. And when we simplify this out, it comes out to be negative 4x all over, negative 2 squared is just 4. Simplifying this even further, boom, boom, those are gone, so then it looks like negative 1x. Same exact thing as what we got before, uh, just in my opinion a lot less work. So I'm sure that there is a reason why they you know, want you to have the formal definition. I'm sure when you start getting more um, with like a little bit more elaborate functions, um, you know, this might be an easier option to use the formal definition. Uh, maybe where you don't necessarily have to simplify things, that might be a nice option. Uh, but again, I really think that the second method it just conceptually makes a little bit more sense because you're taking the inverse, you have to first find the inverse, and then you're taking the derivative of that. Uh, again, that's what you're looking for in the end. And as you can tell, get the same exact answer. So, whatever option you feel is best for you, definitely uh, you know use that. I want to say that for the AP exam, yeah, you do have to know, you do have to know the first method, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, in fact, we'll be looking at some AP problems where you actually kind of see that and use that, so just keep that in mind. I think for, you know, beyond the AP exam though, the second method is definitely a viable option, all right? Uh, but all right, again, that is example two from our 3.3 set of notes.